Dude, tarot card? Tarot cards? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's tarot cards? I'm drawing one. F you. Death. <laughs> Are you joking me, Justice? <laughs> I could not believe you just did this. Give a sign. Tarot cards. Tarot cards? Don't you f dare. Nah, it's round two, baby. Let's go! Death. Damn it. So yeah, I totally stole this intro from Mandalore. I'm not going to apologize. I just wanted to make mention of it. If by chance Mandalore is watching this video, please do not be mad at me. I thought the intro was really funny and I couldn't think of any other intro that would work for this video. Um. Oh my god, what is that? <laughs> Halloween miss is here. And I haven't released a video for the season in two years. Better late than never, since I'll be talking about Phasmophobia, the early access ghost hunting darling that you might have seen on TikTok, YouTube, or your short video platform of choice. Normally, I don't review early access games because the development can change so dramatically that an initial video could be severely outdated. Content is added, bugs are fixed, and the overall scale of the game can change, especially if it has been in early access for a long time. Or they could be in the state of always being in early access, or shut down entirely. Thankfully, that last one is not the case here. And there are a couple of reasons why I'm covering Faz today. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> one is because I'm feeling lazy, I wanted to do a short er video for once. Second is that my friends and I play this fairly often. Collectively, we have a few hundred hours logged into it, so clearly something is going incredibly right for Kinetic. And three, the most recent major update overhauls the game in such a positive way, it brings new life to the game while keeping what made it popular originally. This is one of my favorite indie games on the market right now, and I'm going to explain why. It's tarot cards? Don't tell Justice, especially you. Uh-huh, it's tarot cards. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably best to start from the beginning. Phasmophobia launched on Early Access back in September of 2020, you know, the dark times, by one person by the name of D. Niter, or simply DK. He launched the game as a passion project. Little did he know that an obscure website with a small community called Twitch caught wind of it. People streamed it and it became a phenomenon, and very quickly rising as one of Steam's most popular indie titles. Three years later, and the game, while keeping its core elements the same, has received a ton of updates for stability and content additions. It even is about to be released for the Xbox and PS5 later this month. The most recent massive update was back in August with the Ascension update, which overhauled and reworked the item system, but we'll get to that in a bit. The goal of the game is simple. You go to a haunted location, find and identify the ghost using all sorts of gadgets and tools such as EMF readers, thermometers, dots projectors, you get the idea. Pretty much what Zach Baggins uses. Sounds easy enough, but you have to be careful because the longer you stay around, the more unsettled the ghost gets and will eventually lock the front door and hunt you and your crew down. Identify the ghost correctly and you get a good payday and XP. If you die, you can still get rewarded but at a 50% deduction probably to conduct a satanic ritual to bring you back to life. You know, normal ghost hunter expenses. Get it wrong and you'll only earn a few measly bucks depending on what you did. The more you level up, the better equipment you can access and purchase with the money you've made busting. Those of you might be looking at this footage and thinking, wow, this looks like absolute jank. To which I say, yeah, it was made by one guy initially. What do you expect, photogrammetry? But it does look good enough to capture the atmosphere. All the locales take place in nighttime or close to nighttime settings with all sorts of varying weather conditions, and it only gets darker as you enter the ghost zone. There's a creepy factor to it. Sure, there is an abandoned prison, mental asylum, even campgrounds which are naturally creepy, 
But even the basic houses have a very uneasy feel to them. The very lightly lived in touches and lack of dirt or wear makes them odd. Then you get some ghost activity and then all hell starts to break loose. Light of any source becomes your friend. The effect of flashlights piercing through the abyss-like darkness or the warm glow of candles and lighters is fantastic. You feel safe when you have some sort of light around, as you should, because the longer you are in the dark, the lower your sanity becomes. And the lower your sanity is, the more aggressive the ghost will become and inevitably will hunt. You can prevent sanity drain by keeping the lights and power on or slow it down by holding a candle. But the ghost might become an eco-terrorist and turn off the lights or simply blow them up. And candles will melt over time, so you can't fully rely on them. The ghost will do everything in its power not only to deter you, but fuck with you as well. Sometimes it'll cut the power. Maybe it'll just make a hiss noise. Some can be so aggressive that they might fake a hunt, cause a red light event, or simply just hang out in a corner and say hi. Maybe while you're looking for dots or ghost orbs, it will knock the camera and tripod to the other side of the room. If you're brave and quick enough, you can take photos of it and the events it does for some extra cash, with the trade-off being that the more you look at it, the crazier you and your team becomes. Photos in general are incredibly important if you want to level up and buy equipment. In fact, get good enough photos, correctly identify the ghost, and get out alive, you will achieve a perfect investigation, which has a huge cash and XP bonus. When you do become so insane that you believe that Deacon St. John is a good character, All right, you know what? the ghost will lock the doors to the outside and try to kill you and your team. If you are in sight of the ghost, it will chase you and give you the smackdown. There are a few ways to avoid death. If you're not in line of sight, you can hide in a closet or some sort of hiding spot, though this is dependent on what kind of ghost you're dealing with. This is also very dependent as the layout of the hiding spots is randomly selected per playthrough, so a closet that was empty in a previous run may be entirely blocked off in the second. If you are in line of sight and have a smudge and lighter in your possession, you can light the smudge and yeet it at the ghost. This will cause it to go blind for a brief moment so you can run away and find somewhere safe. Or you can prevent a ghost from hunting in the first place by putting down a crucifix or smudging the area where the ghost is lingering. Though this only staves the ghost off for a brief period. Or you could take sanity pills, which work well, but if you're playing with a group, you need to distribute the pills accordingly as the team average sanity determines if the ghost can hunt or not. There's a wide variety of ghosts. While they might share similar character models, each one behaves completely different from one another. For example, demons will begin hunting much earlier than any other ghost. A Diogen targets a player and knows exactly where they are at all times, speeding towards them at speeds only seen by Ace Combat fans, but will slow down to a complete crawl once close enough to you. Shit's incredibly terrifying if you're trapped in a room with no escape. Smudge it, smudge it, smudge it, smudge it, smudge it, smudge it! No! I don't have smudge. No. <laughs> you dickhead! A shade is a giant pussy because it can't hunt so long as someone is in the same room with it. A fae will age the longer people are near to it, so when it hunts, it can barely move. Conversely, the younger it is, the faster it goes. Oh, she's fast! Holy sh! You also need to be aware of the mimic which, as the name implies, can mimic the evidence and behaviors of any other ghost. Though this all gets even more amplified as the difficulty increases. When starting out, you might do either amateur, intermediate, or professional. These are fine as they can help you understand the basics of the equipment and what to look for, like using the spirit box to communicate with the ghost, looking for ghost orbs on the camera, or looking for temperatures below zero degrees Celsius. It'll even train you on using smudges correctly if you're being hunted, what hiding spots look like, how to prepare effectively with the time you have. Amateur and intermediate have grace periods where the ghost cannot drain sanity or hunt. Once you move to professional, the grace period goes away and the power is turned off. So turning on the power, finding the ghost room, and getting set up is priority. Plus, ghosts will give three specific pieces of evidence 
When you get all three, you will then have a confirmed 100% answer for what ghost it is. Once you have a fair handle on the process, I'd strongly suggest that you move over to Nightmare. This is where the game truly comes alive. Because not only will you earn more money and XP, there are significant changes to the gameplay that makes runs more unique from one another. One of the most important changes is the evidence. On Nightmare, the ghosts can only provide two pieces of evidence, which means you're going to have to crank up the Sam and Max music and put on your detective hat in order to figure out which ghost it could be. This is where all those different ghost behaviors come into play, as now you'll have to run all sorts of different tests. For example, you might be in a situation where you've confirmed spirit box and freezing temps. You do some testing, but it feels like it keeps doing things differently per hunt. If you set up a video camera in the ghost room and wait long enough, you might see ghost orbs. This confirms a mimic as it is the only ghost in Nightmare or higher that will always give this piece of evidence, regardless of the evidence cap. That's fairly straightforward, but in another run, you might get two pieces of evidence and mimic is completely ruled out. This is where you'll have to play around with the equipment and see how the ghost reacts to them as well as your overall presence. You certainly will need to be hunted in order to gain a better understanding of what the ghost is. You also need to factor in the use of the cursed items. These are items that you can find and use to help you identify the ghost or gather more evidence and cash. There are some really fun ones like tarot cards and the monkey's paw. Did you just draw a card? Oh no. <laughs> run, run! <laughs> Fucking <laughs> There's some incredibly risky ones, like the summoning circle and the Ouija board. There is one that is still kind of fucky to use, and that's the music box. You'll have to be careful as using any of these items can cause a cursed hunt, which lasts much longer than a standard one. But like I said, some are not that fun to use. The voodoo doll is fine. Pins are pushed in into random spots with each pin quickly draining your sanity. But if you push in the pin that's on the heart, it triggers a cursed hunt. It's fine, but not as entertaining or random as the other ones. But the most notorious item of them all is the music box. The idea is that you use it to hear the ghost sing and identify where it is in the house, or maybe even use it to get a free photo. It's just kind of weird to use because how it should work by description doesn't always seem to be the case. Even though my friends and I have a fairly good basis of this game, we haven't touched much in the way of insanity difficulty. That's where things become extremely difficult. The ghost will only give one piece of evidence, it will roam around more, and your sanity drains like a rock. The payout is nicer, but the difficulty increases significantly. Adding to that difficulty is the larger maps. Most people play on the house or farmhouse maps. The larger maps are the campgrounds, prison, high school, and even a mental asylum. The problem is that they're so big that the harder difficulties makes these maps more annoying to play. You could spend a lot of time roaming around in the dark, even getting lost, looking for a general idea of where the ghost mostly hangs out, but all of that time can be for naught. There might be some phasmo chads in the comments section roasting me for not being able to play these maps effectively. Hey look, some ghost hunters are better than others, and if they can do these larger maps with no issues, more power to them. I'm gonna keep playing the house maps because I want to continue enjoying the game my way. <laughs> the campgrounds are the most tolerable of the bigger maps, but they run inconsistently. Even though this game is very, very easy to run on most computers, the campgrounds is one of the most taxing maps on my system, and for a time, it didn't work at all for one of my friends. What is pretty cool though is recently Kinetic allowed for players to customize their difficulty. These can be changes into the ghost behavior, player movement, equipment limitations, or just being a dick. 
The most positive change has been the revamping of the equipment. Before the Ascension update, the equipment was good, but it did make everything feel the same. There was no real difference between a person that was level 1 and a person that was level 100 aside from the presumed general knowledge of the game. Now things are different because the base tier equipment is pretty terrible. The spirit box constantly fades in and out, the thermometer takes much longer to read since it's a mercury thermometer, and the video camera gives me PTSD flashbacks of when my hoarder grandmother would have three of these wrapped around her neck, recording sometimes me as a child or random bullshit. She would even use the camcorder pointed at the TV to record programs if there was no VCR. Not everything that's in tier 1 is bad though. Glow sticks are really nice because not only can they be used to mark certain areas and find ultraviolet clues, they can also be used as a flashlight. The tier 1 flashlight is god awful, so I like to use the glow stick instead. You can also have it out when the ghost is hunting because it doesn't count as electronic equipment. By the way, the ghost will track you down if you have electrical equipment on, so you better turn off that shit or just drop it. Holy fuck! The trade-off is that in order to get UV evidence on camera, you need to charge the finger or footprints in order to get a proper photo. The glow stick doesn't really do a good job of doing that. As you play and level up, you can purchase the upgraded items where things become wild. The thermometer is now electric, but you have to charge it up in order to get a temperature reading. The tier 2 tripod is not only stronger, but you can rotate it. Now, instead of having two cameras set up in two different angles of the same room, you can plop your camera in the middle of the room or in between doorways and rotate the camera from the safety of the van. But it can only rotate and not much else. And the tier 2 flashlight is just better. And immediately invest in that and shame your friends who didn't upgrade their flashlights. There's also daily and weekly challenges that reward you lots more money and XP to aid you in getting those better items. The challenge mode is always one to look forward to as there is a few thousand dollars on the line. So even if you die, if you get the ghost right, that's still around $5,000 which can be worth several levels by that point. Phasmophobia can be a spooky game, What? 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 but it can also be a silly one too. It, are you <laughs> What? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> the whole premise is that you and your team are ghost hunters, and while you see and interact with the ghosts, your evidence gives off vibes of faking it. I'm not entirely sure if ghosts exist or not in real life, but whenever there's a show or a video trying to prove that they exist, it comes off incredibly faked for shock value. And Faz completely embraces this silliness. Only you know that these ghosts are real, and whatever hard evidence you gather looks like nonsense. It's fantastic. It's why I love Phasmophobia so much. It balances the hack fraud nature of those ghost hunting shows with the absolute horror of real ghosts coming to mess with your head and snapping your neck. There are people out there that are scared of this game. <gasps> oh my god. <gasps> There are other people out there who feel no fear. I didn't. Keyboard is yes. I'm on top of the monitor is no. <laughs> and then there's me, and collectively my friends, who will laugh and make fun of the ghost while also feeling the existential dread of this being that can fuck us up in a matter of minutes. And it never gets boring because so much can change moment to moment. No two runs, even if they end up being the same ghost on the same map, feel exactly the same. Though this game isn't perfect. There is a reason why this game has not left early access yet. There have been reports of crashing, aforementioned performance issues in certain maps, and some strange bugs. Sometimes our microphones don't work so we have to relaunch the game and fiddle with the input settings. Some smudging doesn't work as intended. There can be glitches with the maps. There is more to be done, and Kinetic knows it. 
Plans for more maps, ghosts, improvements, and all sorts of features are in the works. But if you have been eyeing Phasmophobia for some time, this is the opportunity to get into it. It's fun, cheap, and very active. You'll get sucked in quickly. There are other Phas-like games out there, but Phasmophobia currently still remains king, and seems like it will remain for quite some time. Hey guys, JK here. This is going to be a different ending because one, there's no Q&A segment, and two, I just wanted to speak from the heart, so this is all unscripted and it's going to sound weird and I might stutter and mispronounce things more than usual, so just bear with me for a second. I just wanted to extend a massive thank you to all the new people that have either subbed or watched my video, videos, and commented and, you know, just giving me support and feedback and everything. You know, usually I get like a couple hundred views per video and that's fine. Sometimes I strike a little bit more attention, but not to the degree that <laughs> that the last video did. Like, Jesus Christ, it's almost at 100,000 views. You guys watched 20,000 hours of my content and it's just, it, <laughs> wow, just, just, just wow, I am, I can't be more grateful. And especially now that I'm over a thousand subs, that that was a goal that I was not expecting to hit this year. I thought it was gonna be more of like a 2024 thing, but you know what? This is a great Halloween treat. And genuinely, I I, I am in deep gratitude. I, I, I've said it so many times. I posted it on my YouTube channel, the, you know, the post features. I've talked about it on my Twitter. I've. It, I'm not calling it that, but I po po talked about it on my Twitter, I, everywhere, just, just everywhere. And I've been talking to people and again, it's just been, it's been great. And I'm going to say thank you for like the 30th fucking time. And I'm probably going to say it 30 more times. And then after that, I'm going to say it 300 more times because I, it's a, it's such an accomplishment that it just, <laughs> it, it makes me almost a little bit water, a little bit misty eyed, you know? A little bit misty eyed. Um, and mainly I didn't respond to everyone's comments in the last video because there were so many and some of them are just like fair criticisms of the video. Some of them are just like, is, is moon logic even fair to say? I mean, I don't really know. The bottom line is I'm going to be doing a comment response where I'm going to respond to the video and the comments and I'm also going to be roasting some of you guys because some of you guys are just very funny and we, we all need a good laugh. So thanks again for supporting me. Thanks again. I'm looking forward to creating more content for you guys, more videos, and I'll catch you guys soon. Take care.